Hey everybody and what's up and welcome to P. Dunham Reports Black History. Uh, I'm going to do a, a little short story on this brother right here uh, just to, you know to inform our people that you know our people have been in from the struggle have been in it and this is William Cooper Nell who was an African-American abolitionist, journalist, publisher, author, and civil servant of Boston, Massachusetts, who worked for integration of schools and public facilities in the state. Writing for abolitionist newspapers, The Liberator and The North Star, he helped publicize the anti-slavery cause. He published The North Star from 1847 to somewhere uh, and still in the 1800s, which is uh, unknown, moving temporarily to Rochester, New York. Okay, um, he also helped found the New England Freedom Association in the early 1840s and later the Committee of Vigilance to, ref to aid refugee slaves. The Committee of Vigilance supported resistance to the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850, which had increased penalties against even citizens in free states who aided refugee slaves. Nell's short histories, services of colored Americans in the wars of 1776 and 1812, and the colored patriots of the American Revolution were the first studies published about African Americans. He is noted as the first African American to serve in the Federal Civil Service where he worked in the post office. Okay, uh, 1916 in Boston, Massachusetts to Louise Cooper from Brookline and William Gonnell from Charleston, South Carolina. His father was an important figure in the abolitionist movement having helped to create the Massachusetts General Colored Association in the 1820s. Nell encountered racial discrimination as a student. In 1829, he was passed over for an award given to excellent students upon graduation from the Abel Smith School, apparently because of his ethnicity and excluded from a celebratory dinner. Uh, he managed to attend as a waiter the award was financially supported by the estate of anti-slavery anti advocate Benjamin Franklin. The school committee instead gave Nell the life of Ben Franklin in our autobiography. Wow, that's that's uh, that's messed up, but that was during those days. Uh, blacks just just couldn't. Uh, get ahead even though uh, he was a free man because he was born a free man inspired by the founding of William Lloyd Garrison's newspaper the Liberator Nell decided to change race-based discrimination and segregation as his father had done Nell was was particularly interested in encouraging the intellectual and social well-being of young African Americans he was dedicated to integration and opposed the separate abolitionist organizations for blacks and whites. In his devotion to integration, he dismantled the abolitionist Massachusetts General Colored Association, which had been organized by his father. Nell studied law in the early 1830s. He was never admitted to the bar because he would not swear allegiance to the Constitution of the United States as he believed it was a pro-slavery document. He was influenced by the opinions of Garrison and Wendell Phillips. Around this time, Nell also began his association with Garrison and the Liberator. This connection would continue until the paper closed in 1865. Nell fought for the ideals of Garrison throughout the abolitionist campaign. Nell began working against the existing system of segregated schools for black 
and white children in Massachusetts gathered 2,000 signatures from the black community on a petition to the state legislature. In 1855, Nell and his colleagues gained a victory. Segregation was ended in Boston schools. Nell also encouraged young African Americans to learn outside of the public school system. Garrison said of him, perhaps no one has done so much, certainly no one has done more for the intellectual and moral improvement of our colored youth. In 1843, Nell continued his crusade against segregation within the abolitionist movement by denouncing the Buffalo National Negro Convention. He claimed they served as and promoted exactly the type of separate abolitionism he was fighting against. On the other hand, he was influ influential in beginning the New England Freedom Association, an all-black organization that helped fugitive slaves in the North. In this case, Nell supported an African-American group since he believed its cause was closer to the hearts of blacks than white. Nell publicized the Freedom Association direct aid to fugitive slaves as well as the abolitionist cause. He also fought for higher education and encouraged the improvement of young African Americans. John T. Hilton, he founded the Adelphia Union and the Young Men's Literary, Literary Society of Boston. He was a leader in campaigns to desegregate public facilities in Boston. He succeeded in gaining desegregation of the Boston Railroad in 1843 and in 1853 performance halls in the city. Nell served as publisher to Frederick Douglass, the North Star, from late 1847 until 1851, moving temporarily to Rochester, New York during this period. He also joined New York anti-slavery societies and founded a literary society. He ended his work with Douglass during the latter fused with his close friend, Garrison. Nell ended all contact with Douglas finally in 1853 when the leader advocated the Colored National Council and the Manual Labor School, which represented the types of segregated institutions which Nell detested. Douglas attacked Nell and other leading black activists who supported Garrison, including Robert Purvis of Philadelphia and Charles Lennox Riemann. In 1850, Nell had to run as a free soil candidate for the Massachusetts State Legislature, but lost. Passage of the Federal Fugitive Slave Law of 1850 required state law enforcement, even in free states, to aid in the recapture of refugee slaves and increase penalties for those citizens who helped slaves. Nell was inspired to renew his fight against slavery. He created the Committee of Vigilance in Boston whose members swore to aid escaped slaves. It served a similar purpose to the Freedom Association of 1842, but was illegal under the new federal law. Mill also supported the Underground Railroad, which had numerous supporters to help slaves reach freedom in the North, with some going on to Canada. In 1851, Nell and other petitioners requested money from the state legislature to commission a monument to Christmas Attucks, one of the first martyrs of the American Revolution. When Boston commissioned a major monument to the Boston Massacre to be installed on the common in 1888, the fallen Attucks was featured in it prom prominently. A few years later, in 1855, Nell achieved another success when the legislator finally abolished segregation in public schools. In recognition of Nell's efforts on this issue, a commemorative dinner was held to honor him. During 1855, Garrison's deliberator, the deliberator employed Nell to journey around the Midwest and study African-American anti-slavery efforts. He attended a graduation at Oberlin College, appreciating, appreciating the easy relations among the integrated students. Nell was outraged by the U.S. Supreme Court ruling in Dred Scott v. Sanford ruling in 1857, which said that ethnic Africans had no legal standing in the United States as they were not considered citizens under the Constitution. 
he organized a memorial celebration of Crispus Attucks at Faneuil, Faneuil, I can't even pronounce this, this word here, at Faneuil Hall, a traditional site of commemoration and work with others to have a Crispus Attucks Day designated in Boston. He reminded people of the participation of African Americans in the fight for independence from Great Britain and helped have addicts recognized in the commemoration of the Boston Massacre. That same year, Nell organized the Convention of Colored Citizens of New England. While it was contrary to his earlier dislike of segregated abolitionist efforts, he argued that the Scott decision was such an insult to blacks that they needed to act separately. In his time from the newspapers, Nell worked for legislation to allow blacks into the Massachusetts militia. He did not succeed in this, but lived to see blacks serve in the United States Armed Forces during the Civil War. With the outbreak of the Civil War, Nell worked to have blacks accepted as soldiers in the Union Army in 1861. He was hired as a postal clerk in Boston, earning the distinction of being the first African American to hold a federal civilian post. On April 14, 1869, Nell married Frances Ann Ames, the 26 year old daughter of Sir Osgood Ames, a barber from Nashua, New Hampshire, and his wife Lucy. B. Drake Ames. The Nells had two sons, William Cooper Jr. and Frank Ames. Yep. And uh, Nell died of a stroke in 1874 at the age of 58. His wife survived him by more than 20 years, dying in Nashua, New Hampshire on September 13, 1895. Okay, um, legacy and honors. The Wynn Cooper Nell House, now a private residence in Beacon Hill, was designated a National Historic Landmark in recognition for his contributions to the abortion movement. Oh, ab sorry, abolition movement. They didn't have no abortions then during those days. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he lived at that home in the 1860s works by Nell. Uh, services of color Americans in the wars of 1776 and 1812. New York printed by Prentice and Sawyer in 1851. Introductions by Harriet Beecher Stowe and Wendell Phillips. The colored patriots of the American Revolution with sketches of several distinguished colored persons and, and so forth. Boston. Robert F. Walcott, 1855. Um, he has some. He has some uh, very interesting stuff that he's done for black people. Um, also, he was also just remember this. He was also the first African American that was that worked for the federal government as a civilian, which was the post office. The United States Postal Service. So we need to keep that in mind. Um, I didn't know there. I didn't know there was some beef between him and Frederick Douglass. You know, since there's a lot of stuff they don't tell you, they don't teach you nor tell you in high school, especially when it comes to Black American history. But um, I hope you guys en enjoyed this this short clip and. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'm going to be doing a whole lot more of uh, videos concerning African Americans because we have contributed a lot to this country and still we get no recognition for it. Until the next time, I'm out.